In today's video, I'm drawing this German Shepherd in coloured pencil. Um, I'm working from a fairly decent reference photo this time, so I can get a lot more details into this piece. I generally like to start with the eyes first. Um, I like to see the character and the soul of the animal, and I find that the eyes are where you get that. And it gives me more of a feel for the whole picture when I start with the eyes. Um, I outline the darks of the eyes and then I go into the highlights and I really burnish with a white pencil because I want to preserve those highlights as best I can and if you burnish to begin with as you know you can't really layer much on top of that so I like to do that and I also go around the whites of the highlights of the eyes with um, the highlights of the eyes with a blue pencil as well it just makes the actual brightest part of the highlight pop that bit more. As you can see, I then move on to around the eyes and the fur that's going around the eyes. Always pay attention to the direction that um, the fur is growing. Um, it's very important, even when you're at the shading stages, to try and keep your pencil lines and your pencil marks going in the direction of the fur. It will really, really help you um, to generate that fur feel. So generally as I go, I layer all the colours I need um, in a section. I will then go over it with a pencil blender. Now I'm using Zestit Pencil Blender, but you can also use odourless mineral spirits, um, like um, anything that's odourless mineral spirits. Um, Gam Soul, I believe, is a popular one, um, as well as any odourless mineral spirits will do for the blending parts. When you're doing that, you do need to make sure that you are adding enough pencil. You need a good few layers of pencil down before it blends, otherwise it just won't blend properly and you'll be looking at it thinking it's a muddy mess. But it's not even a muddy mess, it just won't blend properly, it'll look dull. Um, it's always going to look more dull once you've um, blended anyway. Um, you wait for that to dry and then you layer on top of it. Um, when you're working, even if you are blending you, with an OMS, you need to make sure you are using a light hand because the lighter you are, the less you're disturbing the um, tooth of the paper. Um, the more you flatten the tooth of the paper, the less and less pencil you are going to be able to apply. So you do need to make sure that you're being light, adding plenty of layers, then blending. You wait for that to dry completely. Um, don't ever, ever um, draw over wet um paper once you've blended wait for that to dry because otherwise you're going to damage the paper um, so once it's dry you can go over it again a fair few times um, and build up all of your details you get much richer colors you get darker colors i much prefer working in layers it's just how i like to do it when you're working in fur, on fur you can also use the burnishing technique so you just layer and layer and layer and layer and as you get to your further in um you Blend it out with a either white pencil or you can get burnishing pencils and you keep on going that way. Um, I have also done portraits in that way, but I wanted I, I find it easier, to be honest, to um, use a pencil blender. Um, when choosing a pencil blender, um, don't use, I wouldn't recommend anyway, you can use, but um, I wouldn't recommend using baby oil. Ba baby oil is good if you're starting out and you don't want to sell your work and you don't want to um it, you're not worried about it keeping then you can but it's not archival so um try and stick with the um mineral spirits if you can for um blending out the way i'm doing because what's important to me this is a commissioned piece and i want this to last for years and years and years to come i want it to be as archival as i can make it so the colour pencils I'm using are fairly light fast. I'm making sure that they're the highest light fast um, ratings that I have. They're polychromos. Um, I will mainly use the three star rating rated pencils in those sets. Um, I will not use the um, one star rated pencils if I'm doing a commission piece that I want to sell or a piece that I want to sell um, because they're not very, as light fast. They won't last as long. Um, and I want the colours to stay as true as, for, as they are when I draw as long as possible. As you can see, once I did the eyes, I've moved up to the ears. Um, it's important with the ears to make sure that you're paying attention to all the little details that you can see. There are lots of folds in the skin and um, lots of different colours in there. If you miss out on any of those details of the colours and just rush the ears, um, then it will affect the look of the rest of your portrait. You really do need to spend as much time on the ears as you would on the eyes or the nose or anything um, like that. 
you can see I'm using an awful lot of different colours in this portrait. Um, it's a tan and black German Shepherd dog, but just because it's generally brown and black, they're not just the colours that I've used in the piece. Um, I'm using blues and purples and um, terracottas and oranges and all sorts. The only colour I haven't used in this is yellow because yellow is not a natural fur colour, so I generally don't use that. Um, if I find that I've used a colour that's a bit too yellowy, then I'm using a sort of lilac-y purple pencil because that's its opposite on the colour wheel and I'm just gently blending away with that as well, um, mixing it in because it'll just knock some of that sort of golden colour out. Um, the same as you do with your hair if you're blonde. Um, purple will knock out any excess gold. So um, that's always a good thing to um, remember your colour wheel for helping you with any um, pencil blending mistakes. It won't solve all of them, but it certainly helps. As you can see, again, I've just went through again to blend out with the pencil blender. It looks like I'm starting to draw straight away over it. I'm really not. Um, I am blending away and then I'm either working on a different section while that dries or I've walked away from the piece um, and then coming back to it later. So again, I work from the eyes and then I go up to the ears and then I start working down further towards the mouth. And when you're going onto the eyes, make sure you really are paying attention to the direction that the fur is growing. Um, there are an awful lot of different directions under the eye. Um, make sure that you're not just thinking to yourself, I know what a dog looks like, because your brain will quite happily do that and um, you won't be drawing the dog. You'll be drawing what you think it should look like and it's not going to look as realistic. So trust your reference photo, as I always say, and make sure you are following the direction that all those hairs are growing. Um, the muzzle here, it was a lot darker than it is at the moment. I do this again in layers. I've got light blues as the underlayer and then in the lighter areas and then purples as the under so underpainting, I think is the word I'm after. Underpainting in the um, dark areas of purple and the blue in the light areas and I'll go over them with dark browns and sepias and blacks and keep on building until it looks how I want it to look. Yeah, each section, it looks like I'm just whizzing through. This whole painting took me 12 hours and five minutes. And that's how much footage I had at the end of it before I edited out for you. Um, so each section does take me a fair few hours to do. Um, so don't just feel like, like rushing through it will is the way. And just because you see on YouTube videos, um, people seem to be working really quickly. We're not. We are taking our time. Um, the slower you go, the more detail you're going to capture, the more you're going to pay attention to, and the better your picture is going to end up looking. So if you're thinking your picture isn't looking quite as you want it to, and your painting isn't as realistic as you'd like it to look, spend more time on it. Just because you've got colour on the paper doesn't necessarily mean that um, you've got a finished picture. You've seen the first layers that I've been doing, like now, on this section here, it looks sketchy, it is a mess, but I've got colour on the paper. I, I when I was a bit younger, I might have considered that it was done and what's wrong with it? I've just not put enough layers down. I've not finished my picture, not finished my painting. My artwork isn't complete. It, I haven't worked on it for long enough. So again, base layers down, staying in the general direction of all the fur. I'm starting with the lighter colours first, moving up to the slightly darker colours, blending out, waiting for that to dry and then going back over it. So as I'm drying that section, I'm back onto the tongue. Now the tongues are not my favourite. I hate with a passion drawing tongues. Um, I never feel I can quite get them to look as as realistic as I'd wanted them to. Um, but again, pay attention to your reference photo. Trust that it's leading you in the right directions. If you're struggling to choose what colours should go into it, um, you can go on to programmes like Photoshop or GIMP or anything like that. And you can use the colour picker tool. Um, so just go into the colour selection, pick the dropper and then select parts of your reference photo. And it will show you what sort of colour you should be looking at. Nine times out of ten on areas that you're struggling with, it's you're struggling because they're not the colour you thought they were. Um, I'll give an example of teeth. Teeth generally are light shades of brown. They're not 
often white um and so people often struggle with um teeth and things like that because they just their eyes are looking at one color and because they're mixed in with other colors they've got other colors around them they look a lot lighter than they are so it, going through photoshop and things like that with a color dropper is a really good way to um make sure you're roughly in the right area um when it comes to what colors you're using now in this i have upped the saturation of the dog um I've made him a bit more colourful than the reference photo was because I think it's a more interesting portrait and I thought it worked better. But just because I've not used the um, exact colours, it just looks like he's under a different light. That's because I've made sure that my tones are right in there. I've made sure that my darks are as dark as they need to be. I've made sure that the highlights are as light as they need to be. If you're unsure whether or not your so your contrast is correct you can always turn your reference photo black and white in numerous apps will do that for you you can also turn your picture that you're working on black and white take a photo of it turn that black and white too and compare them and you'll be able to see if you need to go darker in certain areas I'll also point out when I'm drawing any any portrait anything I'm drawing it doesn't have to be an animal portrait um, I will go back and rework over areas just because I've moved on doesn't mean that I've necessarily finished with a section. I will work it until I think it's pretty much complete. But as you carry on down your portrait, you will notice that certain colours need darkening up or need a bit more work. Because as soon as you fill in the white paper around an area... It changes the look of that paper so you may think you've gone dark enough and then do more of your portrait and then realize oh heck I haven't um, so don't be afraid that just because you think you've finished an area don't be afraid to go back in and correct it you need to be balancing your portrait at all times your artwork won't look right if you don't go in and correct a few details um, you will always need to continuously balance your work you'll see as i've been going through this that i've been going back up over certain sections it's because they needed a bit of extra work as i was looking at it once i'd finished a new section so i'm really just finishing off now um adding the final details to the fur and doing my final fur strokes that i need to make him look more realistic adding more highlights and the darks just where they need to be the contrast wasn't quite right so i'm just hyping up the darks in certain areas in a moment i'm going to be adding some final highlights through the piece here we go with my touch up texture and titanium white and then in certain areas i'll tone that back down once it's dry with colored pencil just so that it's not so stark I love this product because unlike acrylic paint and gel pens, it's archival, it's designed to be used with coloured pencil. And that is it for this guy. Thank you all for watching. If you found this video useful, please leave me a thumbs up. I post new content every Thursday. If you don't want to miss anything, please press the subscribe button below. You can also press that bell icon. It makes sure that you get notified by YouTube for all new content I post. That's it from me now. Bye, guys.